good afternoon everyone i welcome you all good afternoon everyone i welcome you all thank you so much for joining good afternoon everyone i welcome you all our today's speaker is about to join good afternoon everyone our today's speaker is already with us thank you so much for ma'am for joining hello dr aditi thank you so much for inviting me today uh am i audible clearly yeah 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 and uh, what so, about uh, me we'll, yes 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 your voice clarity even the video clarity is absolutely clear now we will uh, we should uh, start the session yes Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all. Uh, our today's speaker is Dr. Sathe. Uh, I am Dr. Aditi Kulkarni. I am a consultant physiotherapist and ergonomist. I am the director of the Active Physiotherapy and Ergonomics Clinic. Uh, on the occasion of our seventh anniversary of our clinic and launching a new facility, which is exercise medicine at our clinic, uh, we have arranged a new uh, a new thing, which is health talks, and it is a very interactive session. Uh, so th- today is the uh, last session of this series uh, dr sathe who is a renowned ophthalmologist is with us for this session uh, without wasting a much time i'll give a brief introduction about uh, dr sathe dr sathe is a uh, renowned uh, eye surgeon in pune she has completed her dnb uh, she is specialized in cataract surgery by the feco with uh, foldable and multifocal iol implantation and the lasik surgery uh, she has performed over 3500 surger- uh, surgeries so far in all the sub uh, sub specialties of the ophthalmology she also has completed super specialization in the pediatric ophthalmology and the squint surgeries in india and at the moorfields ei uh, eye hospital in london she is currently working as a feco and lasik surgeon at a envision eye clinic aund and the jupiter hospital baner she strongly believes in giving back to the less privileged uh, so regularly conducting the free charges surgeries also so i welcome you ma'am she is uh, not only a wonderful surgeon wonderful doctor but she is a wonderful person and a wonderful human being uh, i really appreciate all uh, her skills and i personally have taken the treatment from her so i really uh, appreciate and admire her uh, expertise Thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for giving your valuable time and joining us for today's session. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Aditi, for those kind words. Uh, uh, 
yes ma'am and thank you for uh, having me today yeah uh ma'am uh, about the today's topic we have uh, already published uh, it's a computer eye uh, vision syndrome and uh, it's relation in the uh, in the field of physiotherapy so uh, what exactly the computer uh, vision syndrome and how exactly uh, we have to identify in early stage of it we would like to more in detail about it um that's a very valid question in today's times so i think uh, post uh, during the covid uh, lockdown uh, everybody's screen time has gone up and a uh, lot of people are spending lot of uh, many number of hours on the screen during the day time so computer vision syndrome is uh, basically uh, not just restricted to computer screens as such i would uh, i would like to uh, mention that it is also uh because of the mobile screen use also because of the tv time uh so it is basically a problem where it is a complex of different symptoms which can be right. due to the ocular etiologies the reason can be due to the eyes problem of the eyes or it can also be due to extra ocular etiologies like because of the uh posture problems and all which i think dr aditi will be able to elaborate more about and the visual Definitely, problems ma'am uh ma'am uh, we would like to know ki uh, exactly the etiology is something which is the always uh, we use it in the medical terms but in the right. layman language if we we'll try to communicate uh, to the people he like what exactly the computer vision syndrome so according to me the uh, basic very nice question you have covered ki there are two aspects of it one is the lifestyle modification which is definitely related to the postures and the second is going to be the uh, definitely related to the actual anatomical structures which are getting affected because of it so uh, yeah. anatomical structures we can say the eye the eye pupils and uh, white mu- uh, muscles of that so it is all about muscular uh, and the uh, parts of that particular eye so this is how exactly the computer eye syndrome is affecting everyone in the today's uh, pandemic when everybody is stick to their screens uh, can be any devices so uh, yeah, this is actually what we are also doing it on instagram but this is for the information <laughs> purpose and as we are a doctor we definitely agree on this point we should not but nowadays everything is becoming high tech and that is the reason we have chosen this topic how exactly this is going to get uh, i mean these are the commonest symptoms how to identify that and what are the remedies for those yes ma'am over to you what exactly the uh, i mean we really would like to know ki how exactly that common symptoms are going to be because uh, see when my eyes become red i feel it's a dry eye sometimes uh, i get so much fatigue that i get a headache so what exactly is the thing that i would uh, i will come to know ki what are the common symptoms for this computer vision syndrome right so common symptoms usually are uh, these can range from uh, plain eye fatigue at the end of the day due to excess screen use it can be irritation in the eyes redness in the eyes sometimes some patients they notice that when they are looking from the screen towards a far objects after long hours of screen use there is a problem of defocus because the eyes are okay. so much uh, uh, tired because of only using the near vision it takes eyes a while to focus on the distant objects basically then there okay. is a, there is increased frequency of migraines then sleep disturbances in children it is noticed uh, noted that uh, children become hyperactive because of increased uh, screen use also there is a something called as attention deficit disorders which are very common in children who spend a long hours of screen time basically okay okay and uh, when you are saying is an hyperactive that actual hyperactivity is going to remain for the lifetime or is it actually curable if the screen time is getting reduced it is usually reversible because once the okay. children uh, they reduce the screen time so it immediately uh, gets better basically okay okay and uh, these are basic symptoms that people are experiencing but what may can be the causes i mean what are the uh, uh, things we should avoid that uh, these causative factors we can definitely avoid in the near future right so uh, one of the common causes can be the uncorrected refractive errors uh, sometimes okay. small refractive errors patients don't have any symptoms but uh, these might give rise to the 
eye fatigue in addition to the eye fatigue due to long hours of screen use then uh, there might be inappropriate use of the glasses uh, especially while using the computers some people they have a um, i would say they think that because i have a number only for distance i need not use the glasses when i am working on the computers so these can also increase uh, the symptoms that the patient is having also um, okay be because of the constant near work the eyes get fatigued we all have a power in in the eyes called as accommodation so when we are continuously using our near vision only the accommodation spasm might be there which can cause transient shift towards the minus number which is called as myopia uh, okay. usually it is in the studies it is seen that uh, at the end of the day 20% of the patients they show some transient myopia so which is not a permanent myopia but it is temporarily there but okay. in the rare occasions this can lead to permanent uh, shift towards the minus number as well okay 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 so uh, you all you just wanted to say ki uh, now i am the person who is xper who is having a number which is for the distant vision not by the nearby vision but still i have to use it at the uh, time of using the screen can be the laptop can be the computer or uh, can be the smartphone or can be the tablet so is it mandatory for those also uh, it is not mandatory if you are using for it for the shorter period of time because you can definitely okay. uh, definitely use the screen for shorter durations of time if uh, visually you feel that it is uh, uh, you are not facing any problem while looking at the things but if it is okay. for extended number of hours it is always better to use the glasses when you are using any kind of screens screen okay okay so it is always better the uh, we all say that prevention is better than the cure so whenever yes, you are yes, going right, to sit for the right. prolonged period of time we should have to have our glasses with us uh, and right. what about the centric vision ma'am if the person is not uh, having any spectacular number but still facing these kind of an issue so is it advisable to go for the zero number at uh, spectacles for those um see there are uh, there is uh, one thing called as anti glare glasses okay right so anti glare glasses usually are recommended for people who spend long uh, number of hours on the screen uh, now what okay. is there are screens available with the anti glare coatings on the right. screen itself so right, if right. You, if a person has that kind of screen then uh, it is not uh, um, mandatory advisable get, mandatory uh, also yes. Right. Okay, okay. Because those screens are quite useful. Because while teaching the ergonomics and the uh, uh, physiotherapy aspects of those, we always suggest to have a screen guard to the computer screen to uh, avoid the glares of it, and definitely right. adjust the monitor height properly. So, uh, yes. but uh, those uh, also can be. Uh, I mean, if the company is not providing, you can invest for yourself, or otherwise, you can definitely go for the zero number spectacles for yourself. then uh, we would like to know more that what can be the uh, causes uh, definitely the computer vision syndrome that you have elaborated quite a lot but wherever it is going to start affecting that uh, any there any age limit like you said even the children can get affect even the adults can get affect even the or geriatric patients that means the old age patients also can get affect so any age limit ki beyond that it cannot happen and before that it cannot happen right Uh, that's a good question uh, it is usually there is no age limit as such any person who is spending more than 3 to 4 hours in a day on any kind of screen be it computer like it, it, if it's a mobile it's a tv can have computer vision syndrome but the interesting okay. fact is that children usually they do not present with uh, much of symptoms because they okay. inher they inherently have a ability to get um they their eyes can adapt better for long hours of near uh, vision so they usually don't have uh, they usually have less symptoms so in but in the today's era of online classes it is better to get the children examined by an eye doctor so that the early signs of uh, computer vision syndrome can be detected and they can be treated Oh, uh, uh, like uh, we are just talking about the examination part. Uh, so, how often even the kids and even the adults has to undergo an eye checkup without having even any symptoms? Like generally, we say that a blood test has to be done uh, every year. Like if you have any kind of a deficiency, if you have corrected for those. 
like a bp the sugar there is a periodic checkup for those so we tend to ignore our eye checkups usually uh like right. uh, simply me so if i don't get time i don't have a spectacle so i will definitely avoid it like okay let's uh, do it later on but is it important is it mandatory or is it advisable to go for the eye checkup yeah definitely uh, especially people who spend uh, long hours on uh, computers they should get their eye check and also for the kids every 6 months so every 6 months okay. the checkup is recommended for the kids because the uh, there is a development taking place uh, in the entire body so it is good to get the eyes also checked every 6 months okay and later on after the age of 18 or something like the adults people like us uh, then a once in a year checkup is enough for uh, enough adults. okay okay yeah. so but for the kids as they are growing they should go and uh, before 6 uh, months Uh, i mean after yes, the 6 months every 6 months yes every 6 yes. months can yeah. uh, definitely now the person is diagnosed with any kind of a spectacle number can using a proper uh, number uh, for the spectacles can uh, cure computer vision syndrome or still the chances are going to be there right that's a very good question because i get many patients uh, who see the uh, ads which are displayed in the newspapers or they see it on the websites and they just feel that if i am wearing anti glare glasses i am having a blue filter then i can use the screen for n number of hours and nothing is going to happen to my eyes basically right so uh, using anti glare glasses is definitely recommended because it reduces the glare and the reflection from the screen uh, the blue light filter there are studies uh, which show, which have shown that it reduces the eye fatigue uh, and it also reduces the uh, the it Uh, in the presence of blue light the body uh, secretion of melatonin is suppressed so it is said that the blue light filters they help in uh, maintaining the normal melatonin uh, secretion and preventing the sleep disturbances uh, what is exactly some... the function of melatonin ma'am uh, i mean uh, it is present but definitely there has to be some function and why it is so important for us uh, melatonin it uh, induces the sleep so body has a normal oh. uh, but it has a normal clock so when the melatonin is secreted the it is a time for the body to shut down basically so when you are right. constantly on screen and the melatonin is not secreted the body doesn't get a signal that it's time for the body to shut down and that can give rise to the sleep disturbances okay so this is the circadian cycle one of the way which we always talking right. about ki like you should yeah, yeah. Uh, maintain your circadian cycle even in the previous sessions the naturopath the helio life people everybody said ki self love and uh, uh, proper sleep patterns are definitely going to help you in right. the psychological right. and the mental well being uh, so the same is ultimately applicable even in the ophthalmological health as well you should maintain uh, the proper working hours there has to be intermittent breaks there has to be the proper spectacle numbers you have to uh, make sure that whatever may be the filters you are going to use these are just a subordinate support system but exactly. not the solutions exactly. for everything yes. so uh, those are the things we have to take in consideration and make sure that every after 45 minutes or the 20 20 minutes rule you should keep following for that yes so okay. uh, this is a wonderful information you have shared with us because the sleep is directly uh, related to the melatonin and melatonin is definitely related to the muscular health as well so uh, uh, when uh, we have now uh, corrected the spectacles everything is going on but uh, if the still person is experiencing symptoms and how it is going to be detected like the cvs right. is there i mean the computer vision syndrome if the person is experiencing what can be uh, the symptomology of that person that he is detected now with the i mean uh, the initial symptoms are absolutely fine as you said it is reversible but now it has totally detected so now what can be the solutions for those and how uh, that one can identify that i am the person who is suffering from cvs right so uh, cvs usually it is diagnosed when uh, a patient comes to the clinic and we are doing a slit lamp examination where we get the magnified view of the eyes so dry eyes can definitely get detected by that we usually do a vision testing in the clinic so normally it is done for distant vision as well as for the reading vision but in case of computer users it is important that we do a vision testing at the intermediate distance as well because that is the distance which is used for the computer use so that okay. is one additional thing which needs to be done for the detecting the cvs 
also um, what um, is needs to be done is we need to take a proper history about how the screen is placed how is the glare and reflection coming from the screen are the glasses coating is there anti reflective coating is it there and also the workstation if it is properly uh, proper for the uh, patients uh, um, spending long hours uh, on right. the screen right so basically the ergonomics has to be most appropriate yes, right. and then uh, that's why they have to go for the ergonomic assessment so wh- right. where exactly they are going wrong so that's why they are landing up into these kind of symptoms again and again uh like right. the ideal position of the light ideal position of the screen the monitor height or uh, the inclination of the monitor height then definitely uh, the distance between the back support and the screen then the computer uh, which is a secondary part but definitely the typing technique is the mandatory part of that particular uh, particular posture so uh, when the angles of the elbow the shoulder the neck level the muscle spasm which is present in the neck right. are the associated symptoms we have to take in consideration whenever we are going for the cvs assessment so that means uh, right. computer vision syndrome assessment thank you so much ma'am for uh, uh, i mean putting those many uh, important points in the assessment part as well ma'am we would like to know the special care of those kind of a people who are suffering from the cvs uh, okay so uh, the treatment it usually is uh, about uh, starting the lubricating eye drops that is the most important thing Uh, so there are different types of ant- uh, lubricating eye drops available uh, please do not buy them because they are uh, available over the counter because there are different types and depending on the dry eye type these are recommended by the eye doctors also in some patients where uh, they are suffering from a severe dryness in the eye we like to start something called as a mild steroid eye drops which are recommended for a shorter duration of time only for the uh, faster recovery of the eyes from the dry eyes also what is needed is the change in the lifestyle because uh, it is only not only about the treatment of the current problem but also about preventing the future problems as right. you have mentioned the rule of 20 so 20 20 20 every 20 minutes we encourage the patients to take a 20 second breaks and look at something which is at 20 feet away from the eyes so that reduces uh, something called as a accommodation spasm because we are continuously looking at the near object so when we take a break of 20 seconds that spasm is bra- uh, broken and the eyes immediately get some kind of a relaxation right so that means the stagnant postures we do avoid by doing the performing the stretches every up to 45 minutes but as uh, we forget that eyes are also the muscle so this 2020 rule, uh, rule is applicable uh, in the eye muscle to avoid fatigue and even the spasms of the eye muscles as well right, uh, right. very nice ma'am uh, so the uh, whenever we are performing audience uh, the, there are certain kind of an exercises which we teach in the ergonomic sessions which are basically based on the eye muscle strength the endurance of the eye muscles and to maintain the good flexibility of the eye muscles as well so those uh, exercises to avoid the stagnancy to those exercises to avoid the neck spasm even which are associated with the facial muscle spasms and along with the neck muscle uh, and the eye muscle lubrication so those are going to be definitely helpful for you all and uh, following the 2020 rule as i man said what exactly that 2020 20 is 20 seconds of break you uh, see through the 20 yeah. feet away from that particular position wherever you are sitting so that means if you are sitting on a one chair try to look at the opposite side of the corner of the room and keep looking from the left to right left to right minimum 20 to 30 repetitions each uh, whenever you are into the break so those are going to uh, cause a very nice movements of the pupil it will uh, give a good amount of lubrication the oxygenation will be provided to the eye muscle there will be the good amount of cellular supply so automatically lubrication is going to get maintained so as i ma'am said ki for the fastest recovery sometimes the symptoms are so severe that you have to go for the steroid uh, steroidal uh, tear drops or the uh, to increase the lubrication but those things definitely you can avoid by doing and maintaining the good walking habits Uh, yes ma'am right. the best also, way is uh, like to like yes, to add yes. something is improving the blinking rate so normally our right. blinking rate is around 14 to 16 times in a minute uh, what right. happens is when we are uh, working on the screen the blink rate reduces 
and the tears which are already there in the eyes those cannot spread on the surface of the eye so it is important that we blink uh, frequently even during the breaks make it a habit to do so that uh, is there a swelling is going to get developed whenever uh, there is any kind of an uh, the symptoms are going to be there uh, if the uh, swelling is going to be there in the eyelids also if the lubrication is improper uh if the lubrication is in proper it is it usually gives rise to the uh, feeling of extreme eye, eye fatigue and uh, hmm. there are some patients who even complain that i cannot look at the screen for more than 10 15 minutes at a stretch and in fact they need to work on the screen for like 8 9 hours in a day so it is important that we start on the lubricating eye drops but swelling as such okay. uh, doesn't appear uh it is usually the symptoms that tell us that the eye is uh, extremely dry and we need to start the treatment okay so the increased screen time is one of the major issues these days in the pandemic everybody is facing and this is one of the major causative factor for the cvs right right yes yes absolutely yes so uh, there are associated any other uh, problems which are associated with the increased screen time ma'am which we would like to share with us uh increase screen time um, means uh, can we regarding... that, uh, uh, there are uh, see there are certain kinds of issues which are related to the uh, ocular eye pressures as well so uh, there are uh, certain issues which are associated uh, with the directly the optic nerve there are certain issues which are associated uh, with the uh, any kind of uh, uh, the pupil directly the pupil issue or the uh, uh, the disc which is present over there so any kind of a uh, thing which you would like to add into the all these things or it is just the uh, the basic symptoms are going to be associated with the cvs is it dry eye syndrome then the fatigue pain syndrome or the squints can be sometimes can get developed because of the eye muscle and uh, uh, if the intraocular pressure is increasing then what per- the other person should do it Uh, see usually in computer vision syndrome the glaucoma and the uh, rest of the uh, complaints that you mentioned they don't uh, they don't happen they don't uh, they are not there usually it is only related to dry eyes or uh, like you correctly said that it can give rise to neck pain or shoulder pain which can happen uh, so what happens in that is uh, there are certain um, i would recommend certain uh, things that we can do uh, i yes. think is it is it getting paused in between uh, am i yeah, audible yeah uh, it uh, yes yes you are audible but sometimes it is getting paused but after okay fine the clarity is there okay 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 so i would like to add one thing is uh, it is important that uh, we do the uh, check up of the brightness of the screen as well as well as the positioning of the screen that uh, uh, i think is very important in preventing the computer vision syndrome uh, so patients they usually ask that uh, what is the brightness uh, what should we keep as what is the optimum level of brightness but right. i would like to add is that uh, different types of the day the uh, brightness in the room is different so the brightness right. cannot be adjusted every time during the day so if you can do it uh, definitely go for the screens which automatically change the brightness of the screen during different times of the day and right. a simple test can be done to decide the brightness is that uh, in the normal room light just take a white plain paper in hand and what we can do is compare the white paper with the screen that we are using so reduce the screen brightness so much that it appears like the paper in our hand so that is okay. the right kind of brightness that we should be going for it is uh, a simple test when the test. paper uh, yes ma'am yes ma'am uh, you may continue i'll just uh, ask you after this right so the it is a simple test which anyone can do and uh, going into the figure of the brightness that this much illumination should be there it is not easy to measure but this is a simple test which anyone can do at home to Uh, control the brightness of the screen uh where exactly we have to put that white paper ma'am uh, is on the side of the screen or top of the screen side or the below the screen. the screen side, side of, of the, the screen. screen 
yes okay, okay. side okay. of the screen and just compare it with the screen so reduce the brightness so that the screen matches the paper and that Correctly. is the optimum brightness yeah okay okay and uh, there is a one more point we would like to add if that uh, the it varies from the light uh, the tube light which is present in the room also right. yes, if the yes. light is coming from the top if the light is coming from the horizontal side the inclination of the screens are going to uh, going to be different so this is a total uh, part of the ergonomics and that we uh, that is the reason ma'am uh, mentioned in the previous uh, uh, points that uh, whenever you are going for the ophthalmological assessment definitely you should go for the ergonomic assessment of your workstation as well as your postures so automatically and ultimately it will be helpful for you uh the now we can uh, discuss about more of ophthalmology definitely it's a very vast and wide uh, spectrum of the diseases comes under the ophthalmology but the basic ones are the intraocular pressure which is increasing which is a glaucoma or otherwise there are cataract patients we come across in the clinic also so uh, any uh, guidelines for those ma'am yes definitely uh, what uh, we all ophthalmologists we have observed is that because of the covid patients are little scared to go to the clinics and uh, getting the regular eye pressures checked so it is very important that the eye pressure is checked regularly in the clinic so that to keep the glaucoma under control so uh, also in the cataract patients uh, there are patients who naturally they are little scared of going to the clinic but it is important to get the even the cataract patient screened regularly so as to decide the optimum time of the surgery uh, and not to delay the surgery too much okay okay so uh, there is a appropriate time for each and every surgery there is a appropriate time to get all the kinds of thing uh, check up done so uh, never yes. avoid audiences because we completely understand the covid scenario is very totally difficult for everyone to uh, deal with uh, it is going to be uh, definitely going to take a little bit of time to get accustomed to the all uh, environment and all right. the things in the yes. daily routine but uh, this is about your health and we all the doctors are taking highest uh, yes, care uh, about the uh, sanitization because not only you are going to be there we are there for the almost 17 to uh, 18 hours in our workstation yes, so absolutely. which is our clinic so uh, nothing to worry at all this is about uh, your health and this is about your intraocular pressure because there are many many problems are associated if the intraocular pressure is going to get increased right. and these are not only going to be related to the eye muscles or the eye issues it is associated with the even the memory and even with the physical fitness of your body the second thing is going to be the cataract surgeries which ma'am said now uh, this is something which is surgery so uh, not even a single doctor is going to tell you without even there is a necessity for that particular surgery so uh, the ch- regular checkups and everything can keep a proper check on your cataract uh, ag- increase in the cataract symptoms so make sure that you are doing a correct checkup at the same point of time you are visiting clinics on a proper time as per the uh, guidelines given by the ophthalmologist whichever nearby to you wherever you are going and definitely the computer vision syndrome which we can definitely uh, avoid getting to yourself affected or otherwise uh, if it is diagnosed also it is totally reversible as I ma- as ma'am said we have to all just have to take a simple simple precautions in the daily routine to take follow the 20 20 rule take the 45 minutes intermittent breaks or sometimes uh, if there is a simple simple acute symptoms are present visit your nearby ophthalmologist to get yourself corrected thank you so much ma'am for giving uh, such a wonderful information and sharing such a important information with all of us uh, if uh, now audience is your time to share your questions with us if any questions you can jot down in the uh, uh, this comment box we are ready to answer it now ma'am you would like to add anything from your end uh, definitely this is what i felt so i just uh, sum up uh, our uh, session with this right so i would like to add one thing is that uh, there is a question which i get asked very frequently is that uh, how much is the screen time recommended for pediatric patients especially so i would like to uh, mention that less than 2 years age usually we ophthalmologists recommend that no screen time should be allowed for kids less than 2 years and for children between 2 to 5 years it is okay to uh have a maximum screen time of 1 hour which includes your mobile computer as well as your tv time and for children more than 5 years it is okay to give them little more i would say maximum of 
two hours of screen time. But again, it is not one rule fits all kind of a, a thing. So it might be different for different children. So right. Uh, that is the so kind every of six time. months regular checkup is mandatory for everyone. Right, right. Also, uh, the other thing is when we are uh, talking about uh, the online schooling. Usually, our tables, our chairs, uh, I think they are fitted for the adults. So for children also, I think we have to make arrangements. I think Dr. Aditi will be able to tell us more about it, so that uh, the uh, positioning during the schooling is important, especially definitely. for the children. Definitely, ma'am. There are ergonomics for even the school-going kids, and as well as the ergonomics for the adults. It is not always mandatory to sit on the table and chair setup. They can sit anywhere, everywhere with the corrected postures. And uh, right. these days, the uh, the parents' concern is to invest into the such a expensive furniture because now we right. have to buy those. Don't invest into that unless and until you have learned ergonomics, which is my uh, opinion. First, correct your postures and then invest into the good furniture. That is going to be lifelong for you. And after learning the ergonomic postures and the correct uh, techniques of using everything. uh there are very few people who felt the need of investing in it so this is something ergonomics is all about uh, it's about the science of posture it's about correcting your furniture it's about making your furniture is comfortably for yourself so um there are many uh, there is a one question is coming any i exercises please share definitely sir we will uh, we will share it with you uh, uh i mean there are many i exercises there are almost 6 to 7 which we teach in our ergonomics sessions those we will uh, write it down and we will post it in the comment box or otherwise uh, there are few exercises which i can share it right now also with you uh, from looking to the left to the looking to the right you can do it uh, from one side of the room to the other side of the room then continuously pressure uh, giving a pressure on the orbital region and even on the cheek bones and uh, closing your eyelids uh, so it is going to give you a complete relaxation to the eye muscles there is a uh, clenching of the fist you can do it and can do the contraction of the entire uh, face muscles along with your eyelid muscles there are uh, many others so these are the basic one which i can show you right now on the online session but uh, there is a very detailed study about the exercises of the eye muscles and the pupils uh, yes any other questions uh, audience no more question thank you so much for very informative session wow thank you so much for giving such a, a wonderful feedback we always so uh, 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 like to hear all this kind of feedback so anything i mean the good bad everything is for our benefit uh, so thank you so much for joining and thank you so much for being so patient and a wonderful audience thank you ma'am for giving your valuable time for this live talk session and now today uh, uh, is the last session of the series and it was a computer vision syndrome uh, we are very uh, happy uh, to get associate with you all the doctors and uh, from the bottom of my heart to making it so successful you all have given the dedicated time so i am really happy and i am really uh, blessed to have you all connected with the active physiotherapy and ergonomics clinic family thank you so much ma'am thank you so much dr aditi it was a uh... Uh, a great uh, session all of them these have been a great session so very informative and uh, very relevant in today's time so thank you so much for this opportunity today thank you so much ma'am there is a one more question is coming how much are yeah. the uh, uh, this rays are affecting to your eyelids the sun rays uh right so uh, in the eyelids it is uh, mostly the it is are affecting the skin of the eyelids so when and in uh, the eye in the eyes uh, we usually recommend that uh, everybody should use the uv protection sunglasses when we are going outside in the sun it is uh, okay. good to wear uv protection sunlight uh, uv protection sunglasses and uh, also for the eyelid i think it is a good idea like your face skin it is good idea to use a sunscreen for the skin uh, of the overall face so along with that eyelids as well okay thank you so much ma'am thank you so much everyone for joining thank you so much everyone uh, so now uh, we will come up with the very uh, now uh, this is the health talk series is almost uh, over today all the series the talks are over 
and uh, now in the next few months we will be coming uh, with the new topics the new speakers and we are uh, waiting for your all the uh, and wonderful audiences definitely who are all have been very supportive and attentive throughout the all sessions and uh, giving uh, and uh, giving encouraging feedbacks to our speakers thank you so much and all the speakers thank you so much for being so uh, good to me and as well as the uh, cooperation was wonderful uh, and i'm really honored and blessed to have you in the uh, health talk sessions thank you so much thank you so much dr aditi yeah. okay bye everyone bye, bye.